is much easier when you're elevated. Take your shoulders back, align your body so that you're over your sit bones, your rib cage is over your hip bones and your shoulders are over your rib cage and your head is on straight as if there's a string coming up from the ceiling. So today, you know, I, I actually took a walk. Um, I take a walk every day, but I took a walk the other day and I did 15,000 steps. And by the end, I was actually limping and it made me think um, about our feet. I ended up hurting um, the ball, like where the joint is, where the big toe meets sort of the ball of the foot. And I could barely walk. Of course, with a little bit of rest, one day of rest, it went away. But it made me really think about our feet. And so I did some research on the, on the feet. And, and, your, and what the soles of the feet do and just, and it, I just wanted to share with you. So your feet support your entire body. And that's what I was thinking when I had to walk home limping. They support us when we're standing, all of our body weight, whether we're at a weight we're happy with or a weight we're not happy with, our feet hold all that weight. And, um, and they form your connection to the earth. And when we're in yoga, we always talk about rooting and rising and our feet pressing into the ground. And just think about like these bones of our feet and, our, and the soles of our feet that hold us up all the time. Also in reflexology, they say that the sole of the foot, that a different point on every part of your foot is connected to a different organ and body part. So, um, so interesting, right? Like that our feet hold all of this and they're so, there's a connection to the body. And in, you know, reflexology is, um, is an ancient science. So even, you know, ancient wisdom shows that the bottom of the foot was where they thought that the connection to the body was. So I wanted you to remember this when you choose what pair of shoes you're going to wear, um, or when you spend time standing in line or um, just walking around, when you're sitting in your chair and you press your feet into the earth, when you, when you are in the shower and you're washing your feet and taking care of your feet, offer the soles of your feet some extra love and attention, attention to keep them healthy and happy. And today I'm gonna to keep reminding you about our feet. So we are in easy pose, which is just a cross-legged pose. We're letting our knees fall to the earth. We're gonna start with a breath. So just align yourself. And we're gonna start with Nadi Chodra today, which is um, a breath we haven't done in a while. It's the alternate nostril breathing. And the reason we're going to start with that is, and, and the benefits of it, which is the reason we're gonna start with that is that Nadi Chodra or alternate nostril breathing lowers your heart rate. Um, it relieves stress and it lowers your blood pressure. So it's really a good one to have in your toolbox for any kind of stressful or anxious time in your life. So we take our two fingers, our middle finger and our index finger and place them on your forehead. Take your thumb and plant it on your right nostril. We're using our right hand, unless you're a lefty in that case, you'll just do the opposite and take your ring finger and place it on your left nostril. So your pinky finger is just kind of hanging out there. So we're gonna start by pressing the thumb into the right nostril and you're just breathing in and out through the left nostril. Now, if you have a stuffy nose, um, this may not work, in which case just breathe with us with both nostrils. We always in yoga breathe through our nostrils, not our mouth. So we're gonna close the nostril. We're gonna breathe, inhale, a deep inhale through the nostril and exhale through that nostril. And then close the left nostril and open the right and do that same thing. Inhale and exhale through the right. Close the right, open the left. Inhale, exhale. Close the left. In, inhale through the right and exhale through the right. Close the right nostril, open the left nostril and inhale through the right, exhale through the right. Close the left nostril with your ring finger and open the right nostril and inhale and exhale through the right. One more time, close the right nostril, breathe in through the left nostril and then, and then breathe out. And now close the left nostril and breathe in and out through the right nostril. Release the hands, place them on your knees and just take a moment 
to bring awareness to your natural breathing and your, and your natural breath. Sorry about all the dings. I forgot to silence my phone, which I will do before we head to Shavasana. Okay, we'll start with the seven movements of the spine. So the first thing is on an inhale, raise your hands up, touch the sky, look up at your hands. It's a very gentle back bend as you look up, but also stretch that spine, lengthen. So you get about a half inch in your vertebrae, a half inch taller. So there's more fluff and space in between each of the bones of your spine. Exhale and release. Place your right hand on the floor, tented fingers if you're lifted, and let your left hand come over by your ear. Make sure that you have an open chest. So you wanna make sure your chest is wide if you need to use your left hand to just help your rib cage open as you lean to the right. Take a deep breath in. Always in yoga, when you take a deep breath in, you get long in the spine, lengthen, and as you exhale, you kind of relax into it. So we're here and we're inhaling again and getting really tall, lengthening, lengthening in the spine, and then we relax. Switch sides, so the left hand comes down, tented fingers on your side, the right hand comes up. Again, you might wanna hold on to your rib cage as we lean there so your chest is open and wide, your heart is open. As we lean and as you inhale, get tall, and as you exhale, see if you can relax a little further into the stretch. and release. We're gonna use our hands and we're gonna bend at the hip crease. So we're not bending at the waist, but at the hip crease for a forward bend here. So seven movements of the spine, our spine goes forward. And you really don't want to rainbow your back. You don't wanna end up with a curved back here. You just wanna end up with a very straight back. So, you know, it's your anatomy. There's no competition here. So if you can come down far, that's great. If this is as far as you get, it's still a forward bend. Come back to center and do the same thing. We use tented fingers as we lean back and you're, you're bending backwards at the hip center, at the hip crease, not using your waist to bend. We're not trying to round the back. We're just leaning backwards. And the gaze is up at the ceiling. In yoga, the gaze is called drishti. So it's, and, and your chest is wide here. Heart is open, chest is wide. Your shoulders blades are reaching for each other so that if someone took a karate chop in the middle of your back, you'd feel like your shoulder blades aiming for each other and come back to center. So drishti is the gaze. And when you cue a yoga pose, it's very interesting, but you're supposed to inside, inside information. You start with the feet and where the feet are. And our theme today is feet. And you work your way up the body. And the final thing is where the gaze is. So um, take the right hand, bring it behind you. You're tall, so you're inhaling and you're really tall. And as you exhale, take your left hand, place it on your knee and your gaze, your drishti is over your right shoulder. Again, as we're here, inhale and get tall. So the strength comes in the inhale and the relaxation comes in the exhale as it allows you to maybe sink a little deeper into the pose. And that's true for every pose. The inhale is the strength and the exhale is the relaxation. Cross your arms over your front, get neutral again, and then take your left hand behind you. Again, before you even twist, take the inhale, get tall and strong, and then exhale and just relax. As you gaze, your drishti is over your left shoulder. So inhale, get tall, and exhale, relax. See if you can go a little further. Come back to center. And let's just do a little bit of torso circles. So just do three in each direction. So three, I'm doing counterclockwise first, and then just do three in the other direction. This is all part of the warm up for what we're gonna be doing. Remove the block or the blanket, but stay seated and bring your feet together. We're gonna to do this again at the end of the practice into bound angle pose. So let the soles of your feet come together. While your soles of your feet are together, take your hands and give your the soles of your feet, because today's theme is feet, give them a little bit of love. 
give them a little massage because we're going to stand on them. We're going to place all our weight on them. We're going to place all of our weight on one foot at a time today. So our feet are really doing hard work for us. So we're showing them a little love today for all the work they're going to be doing. So even though we're in bound angle, our hips aren't all the way open yet. So we're not pressing as we would later on to let those knees drop lower. We're just giving our feet, the soles of our feet a little love. Okay, bring your knees back up and come on, to, come into table. So hands and knees. Your, your wrists, your palms, or your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. Your fingers are really wide, press down on the middle finger and all the fingers actually, but press in with the fingertips and the first knuckle and allow a little bit of space between after the first knuckle and the palm, pressing the palm in. The thumb shouldn't be out and stretched all the way. Give it like another 20% in because we use those thumbs all the time on the computer and on our phones. And we don't want to overtax that muscle in there or those bones. So give yourself a little bit of a, of a circle over the wrists so that we're exercising the wrists a little bit and go in the other direction. So three times in each direction. And then take the right arm up to the sky and thread it through. Shoulder comes down, cheek comes down, tailbone stays up at the sky. Press the tops of the feet into the floor. Come back up. Right hand comes down back under shoulder. Left hand comes up to the sky and exhale, bring it through. Rest your shoulder on the floor, your cheek on the floor, press the fronts of the feet down, press the head down and the tailbone is up in the sky. Hands come under the shoulders and we're gonna do a little cat cow. So first we'll do cow. We're inhaling as we sink the belly towards the floor, tailbone reaches up to the sky and our chin comes up, our gaze is straight ahead. So there's a, a back bend here. That's an inhale. As you exhale, bring the navel to the spine, tuck the tailbone, and you're making a rainbow with your back. So inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. This really warms up the spine. And after a few of these, come to neutral. Take your left, your right leg and bring it out smack back behind your hip, like hip level, flex the foot. Take the left hand and bring it out in front of you for bird dog. And this is a balance. You're pressing down with the front of the left foot and the knee and the hand holding your weight. And trust me, this is a balance. It's a strength a strengthening exercise. Let the left hand come back under the shoulder, bring the knee down, hip distance apart to meet the other, get neutral, feel that you're back in alignment, and then let the left leg come back up, hip height, flex the foot, take the right arm out in front of you, the gaze, the drishti is down at the mat so your neck is not strained. Balance here. Right hand comes back onto the arm, onto the shoulder, knee comes down, come back down, let your hips come down to the tops of your heels and let your hands sink out in front of you as your forehead reaches the floor, a child's pose. Take your hands, bring them up, tented fingers, leave your forehead on the floor and bring your hands to the right. Bring your hands to the left. Come back to center, come back up, tuck the toes under and come up into down dog. Walk the feet to the hands. You're in a forward fold. This is our first forward bend. Your knees can be bent. So there are two things that stop a person from reaching the, you know, the, the apex of the pose, which is not really the goal here anyway, but it's either tension or compression. So tension would be your hamstrings are tight as mine are right now, and maybe yours are, and that can, can get looser as, the, as your practice continues, as 
the the you know the session continues and you continue practicing yoga but pretty much when you're cold when you start out with any session you're going to be you're you're you know you're going to be tenser in your muscles than you are later on so we loosen up or it's compression skin against skin bone against bone take your hands take them to the right now turn them take them to the left and now think about it we are on our feet all of your weight is on your feet. Roll up gently, shoulders back, and we're into dasana. So align yourself, your knees are over your ankles, your hips are over your knees, rib cage over the hips, shoulders head on straight as if there's a string. Take your toes and lift them up. Right now you're engaging the quadriceps, you're lifting the knees and you're using muscles in the front of your legs. Here we go with mind-body connection and working with our feet. Place your big toe down, place your pinky toe down. Can you leave those three middle toes up? Keep practicing, you will. <laughs> let all the toes come down, let them be very widespread. We're about to do our first sun salutation. I'll face you coming forward. So toes are wide. The best, some people start with feet close together. I learned that it's much better as we age to have a little bit of a hip distance apart. It's all good. So, you know, it's, it's not about the aesthetic, it's about the function. So we inhale and our arms come up, we touch the sun, we look up at the sky, slight back bend, let your shoulders come down away from your ears, you're rooting and rising, your feet are pressing into the earth and your rib cage, your spine, everything is reaching up, rooting and rising. Find some relaxation here, even though you're pressing and you're strengthening, you're also relaxing. Exhale, come down into a forward bend, your knees should be bent, whether it's a micro bend or a deeper bend, whatever's comfortable. Let your head relax, say yes, say no. Bring your hands halfway up, take your shoulders back so you have a flat back. So try to reach those shoulder blades together as your back is flat. Somebody could serve tea on your back as my yoga teacher used to say, and come back down as you exhale into a forward bend. Hands are planted on either side of the outside of your feet and take your feet back into a pushed up position. Hold here. We're strengthening today. Come down, did I say push up? Plank position, sorry. We're coming into a push up. You can either take your knees down to the floor and do knees, chest, chin, or slowly, slowly come down into a push up. Uncurl the feet so that you're on the tops of your feet. Bring your elbows so that they're close to the body. We're not using our hands to press up in the baby cobra we're about to do. You're just gonna take your gaze, lift it up so that your gaze is on the wall, maybe above where the floor and the, and the wall meet. It's a slight back bend and you're not really using your hands. Your rib cage is still on the ground. Tuck the toes under, lift the tailbone to the sky for down dog. You might wanna pedal your feet so that your hamstrings wake up, but press the ball of the foot on both sides. So the big toe ball, the big ball of the foot and press the pinky toe side down. And then walk your feet to your hands. Bow the head, say yes, say no, relax the neck. Inhale, come halfway up, take the shoulders back again. Exhale, come down. And as you inhale, reverse swan dive the arms and touch the sky, hands to your side. I have to tuck my shirt in so it doesn't go up over my head. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time a little faster so that we have another sun salutation A. So inhale, arms come up, slight back bend. Exhale, come down, touch the ground, allow the head to relax. Inhale, flat back, exhale, hands on either side of the feet, come into plank position. Exhale, come down, push up, uncurl the feet. Cobra, squeeze the elbows. You can come up a little bit higher using your hands. Your gaze is now, the drishti is up towards the ceiling. This is a back bend. 
curl the toes under, exhale as you come, press the navel towards the spine, tailbone to the sky for down dog. Take three breaths here. And when you're ready, walk your feet to your hands. Bow the head, relax the head. Inhale, come into flat back. Exhale, come back down. And inhale, reverse swan dive the arms up, touch the sky. Exhale, hands by your sides for Tadasana. We're gonna do a sun salutation B. So it's the same kind of flow, but we put some more poses in there, um, one-legged poses. So if there's a little bit of warrior one. We've done this all the time. We're gonna do just one of those. I might even add some different poses in there. So inhale, arms come up. Now your hands are not touching, you're sinking down and you might want your arms to be wide so that your shoulders aren't impinged and behind your back. You can keep your arms wide, come into chair. So you're sinking your hips down as if you're sitting in a chair. Here, I'll come over here. Toes are wide, feet are pressing in on all sides. You're rooting and rising. So you're rooting, your, your hips are sinking into a chair, your feet are sinking into the floor and your torso is rising. Take a couple of breaths. This is, you're strengthening those legs. Exhale, just fold over into a forward bend. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. Inhale, flat back. Bring the shoulder blades back behind you together. Exhale, come back down, hands on either side of the feet and come into a plank position. Lower yourself into push, you know, and do a push up. You can come on your knees to do it or lean forward and come into chaturanga. Uncurl the toes, elbows squeeze towards the body and you're lifting into cobra. So your elbows are bent, your thighs are pretty much on the floor, but your torso is up. Your gaze is up at the ceiling. This is arm strengthening, back strengthening. Curl the toes under, lift the tailbone to the sky for down dog. So I learned a new name for a pose as we do this. We're lifting the right leg in the air. Now bring the left, so press the left foot into the ground. You're using the sole of that foot. Send it some love. But now lift that foot up onto the ball of the foot and that is called tail of the dog. I learned a new one. Place the foot back down and slide the right leg through so that it's on the inside of the front wrist. If you can't do it in one swoop, it's fine. Just help your foot to, towards, towards the inside of your wrist. Take the back foot before we rise up and turn it so it's at a 45 degree angle for warrior one. If you're having trouble balancing, it's much easier if you bring your legs a little bit more you know, closer together and also wider apart. Arms come up for warrior one, the front leg is bent, the back leg is strong. Now here, press that foot into the pinky toe side of the foot so that all four pieces, pieces, parts of your foot are equally pressing down into the mat. Front foot is also pressing in. Hands come down on either side of the front foot we're in a plank position, we lower push up. And now we're gonna come up into up dog. Up dog, you're on the tops of your feet and your, and your hands, four points. Your gaze is up at the ceiling, your shoulders are back away from the ears. Curl the toes under, bring the tailbone to the sky for down dog. You can pedal the feet so that your feet come down onto all four parts. Your knees can be bent. Lift the left leg into the air. Press that right foot into the, into the earth. And let's do tail of the dog again. So come up onto the ball of the foot. Tail of the dog. 
bring the foot back down, slide the left leg through so it's on the inside of the front left wrist. Before you come up, take that back foot, turn it so it's at a 45 degree angle. And you're in warrior one on this side. Hands come up, your gaze is straight ahead. Your torso is over that front leg and the knee should be over like the second toe. You wanna make sure the knee is not one side or the other. You know, your ankle is connected to your knee, your knee is connected to your hip. So you want that knee to be straight over the foot. Hands on either side of that front leg, come into plank, come into push up. You can do knees, chest, chin, and let's come back to up dog. Curl the toes under, down dog. And here's where we take three breaths. Shake your head yes, shake your head no, let your neck relax. Let your tailbone come a little bit higher towards the sky. As your torso is long, your arms are long, your fingers are pressing into the mat. Your heels may or may not reach the floor, that's okay. But your knees are slightly bent. And walk your feet to your hands. As you inhale, lift halfway for a flat with a flat back. And as you exhale, come back down. Inhale, sweep your arms up, but you come into chair. Your knee, over your knees, you should be able to see your toes and your knees are over your toes, but you should be able to see them because you don't want your knees to be further out than your feet. Sink, you're, so you're rooting and rising again. So your feet are sinking into the floor. Try to press all four parts of that foot in and your hips are sinking into a chair and you're rising. And as we say that we rise. So just come straight up, hands down by your side for Tadasana. Okay. How you all doing? <laughs> okay, it's hot here. <laughs> so we're gonna do our flow. Feet are pointed straight ahead, toes are wide, all four parts of the foot pressing into the ground. Make sure your body's aligned, shoulders away from the ears. Strengthen the arms for Tadasana. Palms are open and facing straight ahead. We're gonna come into down dog from here. So basically, you're going to, let's touch the sun. Let's exhale and come down into a forward bend. Hands on either side of the feet and just bring the feet back into down dog. So your tailbone is towards the sky. Arms are reaching, heels are trying to reach the floor. Knees are micro bent for sure, maybe more. Breathe here. Lift your right leg into the air and bring it through to the right wrist. We're gonna come up into high lunge. High lunge is toes are planted straight ahead. Take your hands, clasp them behind you. Feel the shoulders come back, feel the shoulder blades head towards each other. And you are bending into the inside of that front leg. Palms, your clasp comes up. This is humble warrior. Hands come back up into warrior one. I think I'm facing the wrong way. That's what I'm thinking. So we're in warrior one. You're turning that back foot. We, we were in high lunge. You're gonna turn the back foot so that it's at that 45 degree angle. Your torso is facing forward. Your front leg is bent and we're in warrior one. Take the left hand and wheelhouse it behind you. Take the back foot, turn those toes so they're planted towards the side of the mat. Your front foot is facing the front of the mat. Your front knee's bent. Your back leg is straight. Your arms are out on either side. Your torso is facing, your hips and your torso are facing the side of the mat, but your front arm is facing the front and your gaze, the drishti, is over the front fingers. Watch that front knee so that it's over the second toe of the foot because the tendency is to turn it in. 
So every yoga pose and keep, hold that pose, breathe in there, it's a strong pose. So every yoga pose could be beginner or advanced and you could take it, take it deeper. You just kind of bring attention to each part of your body and there's sort of like different levels that you can take it to. This is a really strong pose. It's named warrior for a reason. Let the left hand come down your leg as the right hand comes over into peaceful warrior. And exhale, bring the front forearm down onto the front thigh and the left arm comes over in a straight line from the back foot. Press that pinky toe side of the foot of the back foot into the mat. Front arm, not front arm, your left arm is over your ear in a straight line. The pinky toe side of that foot goes all the way to your fingertips. Make sure that knee is facing over the toes, the front knee. Come back to Peaceful Warrior. And back to side angle pose. Inhale, bring the arms up, come back to Warrior Two. Straighten the front leg, that probably feels great. <laughs> and you probably know where we're going. Tip over into triangle. If you wanna take a block, you can have a block on the inside of that front leg, straight leg. Your arms are in a straight line. Or if you don't need a block, your front hand, I guess it's, they're both front hands right now, the way we're standing, but your, the, the, your right hand, the palm is facing out towards the front, you know, away from your body. Front leg is straight, toes pointed out, press into the pinky toe side of the back foot. Have a block handy. We're about to do our, one of our balancing poses. So think about the foot, the front foot, plant it, spread those toes on the front foot. You're in triangle. Your block is on the high side right now. It's in your hand. We're gonna hop. You're in the right position to come and, can you see me? Yeah. You're taking, you're taking that block, bringing it under your right shoulder. Your hips are spread wide, oops. <laughs> your hips are spread wide like you were in triangle and warrior one and you are in half moon. Balancing pose, think about all the weight on the sole of that foot, spread the toes out, spread the weight evenly on the bottom of that foot. Give, send that foot some love. Balancing pose. See if you can straighten out your body. If you're leaning, if your body's leaning towards the floor, see if you can take the hip back. So the hips are stacked on top of each other and the rib cage, everything about your body is like as if you could be between two panes of glass. Slowly, gently take that foot down, turn the, the front toes are facing the front of the room, take the back toes, face them in the front of the room. We're in high lunge. Now, your block is there. You, if you have two blocks, bring the other one so it's near that one. We're doing our balancing in our flow today and place them both in front of you on either side. So the hip was wide open in half moon and we're gonna do the same thing, but your hips are gonna be facing the floor. So as we come from high lunge, which are, are the two points of our hip bones are now facing the front of the room. You're gonna come down, place both hands on the two blocks and lift and into warrior three. Now, if you can, so your, all your weight is on that right foot, send that foot some love. And if you can release the blocks and come into prayer hands here, flex the back foot. Oops, if you fall, just smile. And when you're ready, lay on that back foot down. Bring the back foot, so the left foot, so it's behind in a straight line, the front foot. Put your hands on your hips and bend at the hip crease, not at the waist. As you come into, you can use your blocks if you have to, into a forward bend over that front leg for a great stretch. Come back up, release. You can put your hands on your hips as you come up and bring both feet to the, center, to the front of the mat. Okay, we have to do the other side. So Tadasana, hands out, strength, alignment. Touch the sun as you inhale. Release, forward bend. 
hands on either side of the feet, come back into down dog. Take the left foot and bring it up to the sky and plant it through. You might wanna hop that back leg closer as I just did. Bend the front leg and come up into high lunge. Hands behind you in a clasp and come bend down at the hip crease into humble warrior. So you're coming towards the inside of the front leg. Breathe here. Hands come up, body comes up. And as you come up, take that back foot and turn it so it's at a 45 degree angle. So you are in warrior one. Wheelhouse the right arm behind you and you're in warrior two. So your torso is facing the side of the mat. Your hips are wide across the side of the mat. Your front leg is over your second toe and it's bent and your body is in the center as your right arm comes behind you into the past and your left arm is in the future and you are centered and your drishti, your gaze is over those front fingers. Get the blocks handy, make sure they're handy for you. Make sure the knee is over the toes. Take a deep breath. Let the right hand slide down the back of the leg for peaceful warrior. And the left arm comes and leans onto the front thigh for side angle. Inhale and let the peace and come back to peaceful warrior. Exhale and come to side angle. Come back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg as if someone's taking the front fingers and pulling you forward, tip into triangle pose. I have to get the blocks. You may have to get the block handy for the first balancing pose. So triangle. It's if you're between two panes of glass or leaning back against a wall, make sure that you are sort of not leaning forward, but if anything, it's a slight back bend. Then take that, you can, Bend the front leg as you hop over, hold the tall side of the block with the left hand. Your hips are straight and open against the side of the mat. So you're stacked as you come into half moon. If you can't do this, just lift up the leg where it's balancing. So whatever you can do, the block helps. If you flex the foot and act as if there's a wall behind you, sometimes even psychologically it helps. Gently place that foot back down. Turn the feet so that they're facing the front of the mat. You're in high lunge. Now, high lunge, pay attention to the hips, have both blocks there. The hips are now pointed both towards the front of the room. So high lunge, and then we're gonna place our hands on the two blocks and you're coming back up into warrior three, which is another balancing pose. Plant that front foot, send that foot some love. It's holding on to all of your weight. If you can bring those hands into prayer, even better. And then place the right foot behind the left as you land gently and bend at the hip crease and come into a forward bend over your legs. Take your feet out to the edges of the mat. Turn your toes so they're away from the mat. Your heels are in as we come into Malasana. Oops, <laughs> the yogi squat. So torsos up, plant your feet, press those feet into the ground. You can shift a little bit. You're using, you're pressing your palms together, using your elbows to push out your knees. And we're going to come and bring your sit bones down and sit down. That was an easy transition, right? From malasana to seated. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of a hip opener. So flex your left foot, take your right foot, cross it over the left thigh. You might be like me and have your knee very high up in the air. That's okay. It's all about this, uh, the flexibility of your hip and you know how 
how open your hip is. My hips are not that open. You can take a block and place it under there, but you might not need it. We're doing a, a seated pigeon. So you're going to hold the foot, give that foot some love with your left hand, place your hand on the knee, just gently, you don't have to press down and you're gonna bend at the hip flexor over that leg. You might even wanna grab the, the, the seated, the straight leg for pigeon, seated pigeon. Keeping your back straight as you lean forward, by the way, don't round the back. Come back to the center, switch legs. Your right foot is flexed and the toes are pointed up at the sky. You can hold on to your left foot, give that foot a little bit of love, send it some love with your hand and lean over the straight, the straight leg. Bend the right foot, plant the sole of the foot on the floor. Get tall as we inhale. So inhale, put some length in your spine. Take your right hand, bring it behind you as your left hand either hugs that leg or comes over and hooks over with a bent open palm. As we inhale, we get tall and as we exhale, we relax and we can twist a little bit. Inhale get tall, exhale. See if you can relax a little bit more into the posture. Uncurl, bring both legs out in front of you. Get tall in seated staff pose, feet are flexed, your torso is over your hips. As we lean forward, hold on to the feet, send them some love and slowly do a forward bend over the legs. Come back up and let's bend the left leg. Sole of the foot on the floor, plant that foot, spread the toes wide. You can either hug the knee or you can take it and hook it around. Either way, we are left hand is coming behind you. And we, when we inhale, we get tall. When we exhale, we relax into the posture and see if we can twist. Twisting is giving our organs, our interior, our internal organ, organs, a little bit of a massage. So inhale, get tall, exhale, release into the twist. Come center. We're going to come into a reclined position. So we come and recline. So take a block and put it between your thighs. Squeeze that block. Hands down on either side as we lift up into bridge. And while we're in bridge, you're squeezing. Lift the hips high. See if you can integrate the shoulders down your back. If you wanna clasp your hands under there, you can. The idea is to get the shoulders down away from the ears and down your back and squeeze the thighs as you could lift a little higher. Relax, come down, bring the tailbone down, bring the hips down. Let's hug the knees into the chest. You might wanna sh shake back and forth, give yourself a little bit of massage, your lower back. And while you're here, take your arms out into a T and let your knees fall to the right as your gaze is over towards your left fingers. Your shoulder, so your left shoulder, the tendency is going to be for it to try to come up. See if you can keep that shoulder down. Bring the knees back up to center and send them over to the left as your gaze, your drishti is over to your right. And keep, see if you can keep that right shoulder down. Feet back up to center. Let the, take the right ankle, place it over the left thigh. Thread your hands through the center. Clasp your hands behind the left thigh as you bring those legs a little bit towards you for reclined pigeon. So you can keep that left leg flexed. So all of these pigeons, you can do pigeon in a lot of different ways. This one is um, easier, I'm gonna say easier. 
for most people to get to. You can keep that front shin in the, in the figure four. You know, if you were on a mat, it would, it, it's much harder to get parallel to the mat and we can do it when we're reclined. Switch legs. So the left ankle comes over the right thigh. You can thread your hands through and hold the back of the thigh. As we do pigeon, recline pigeon on this side. Un unwind. Let's take our legs and take, the, take your feet up into the air. Grab the outside of the feet. Give them a little bit of a, sh of a massage there. Sending some love to the feet and let your knees come into your underarm pits as we come into happy baby, which is an upside down malasana or yogi squat. If the ceiling met your feet, you'd be in a squat. And you can actually shake back and forth, giving your lower back. You wanna try to bring the tailbone to the ground. You don't want the tailbone to come up, which is gonna be the tendency. So at the same time, you're pressing the knees into the underarms, you're also pressing the tailbone into the mat. You can, you can probably feel you can relax your hands and not press and just, you know, if it's a relaxing posture or you can work it by pushing the, the feet, the bottom of the feet further down and getting the bend in the hip flexor here. Send the legs straight to the sky, twirl the ankles around. We're sending our feet some love now. One direction, then the other direction. Spread the toes out, flex the foot, point the foot, flex and point. And then send the legs gently and slowly down to the floor into a reclined position. So the straight supine position, let your Toes flay out, your, the tops of your feet flay out away from the heels. Integrate your shoulders down your back. So you might wanna lift up and let the shoulders come together underneath you and let your hands come down by your sides, a little away from the body, whatever's comfortable, palms up. Find a neutral place for your head. And if you can close your eyes, this would be the time we go into Shavasana or find your drishti, your gaze, could be soft facing the ceiling where you're really going internally as opposed to really look, you know, staring at something, but it's just a soft gaze. And as we're about to go into Shavasana, a couple of things, you wanna scan the body for tension. So first feel where it's meeting the mat. Start with your feet and work your way up the body, looking for tension, especially where it meets the mat. So your hips, your calves, your heels, not in that order. <laughs> your upper back is probably pressing into the mat. There might be some tension there, the back of your head. And try to relax something. Be a tension hunter and try to relax something that's not feeling very relaxed. And while we go into Shavasana, I'll leave you with the words of my yoga teacher which is you are beauty, you are love, you are truth, you are light. We'll rest here as our body integrates all the work that we did today.
I invite you to stay here if you have the time. If not, I'd like to start by wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, bringing some awareness into the body. And when you're ready, turning to the right side and using your left hand to bring yourself up. And today, instead of coming into an easy seat or Sukhasana, we're gonna bring our feet back into bound angle pose. So we're gonna take the soles of our feet and press them together and let our knees just kind of hang there. Bring our hands to heart center. And in yoga, we say namaste, which means that the light in me sees the light in you. I wanna say again, how honored and grateful I am that you join me. Um, it means a lot to me and I wish you a wonderful weekend. Namaste.